Hello, hello, good evening. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Welcome to everyone. And it's a great pleasure to have you here. We have uh, some students joining us right now in the class. We have here Rafael, um, Jose Carlos, Salvador. So it's a great opportunity, guys, to be here. And also getting ready to learn English because it's important. And uh, like the previous class, we have a personal challenge to learn a lot during this class. And that is the, something important. So let's wait the, the other guys to join us in the class. And also, you know, try to maximize your English skills. So that's why it's important. And I hope that we can uh, learn a lot from the class. So let's to begin. Okay, more students are joining right now in the class. And uh, we're gonna start, and as uh, we had a class yesterday, we have the opportunity to interact with different concepts. We started different vocabulary, um, always related about training, about personal preparation, and uh, vocabulary related to company theater. So that's why it's important to learn new vocabulary and expressions because we're learning a technical language and that's good. <laughs> listening exercise too is uh, also in, um, interesting to work with listening skills, uh, especially that we are at dance English level. We have to be adapted to different accents and also full English. So that's why it, it's always important to work with different skills working also with listening and also reading and comprehension. So the purpose of this one is that we can also use uh, different strategies to maximize our English skills. And well, the, 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 one of the most important is the communication, the way in which we can interact in the class. We work in teams and we also can express or ideas for those who also can explain some ideas about on a specific task and that's why it's really important. So we're gonna start today because we have different activities and also I always say um, welcome to everyone and also always, always um, congratulate you for coming and joining us in class on time. That's very, very important to take that into account. Well, let's start today with the next topic. And you can see the topic for this class. And we're talking about pair conjunctions, neither and nor. Look at this one. This is the topic that we will um, socialize and neither and nor. And this is uh, a very interesting topic because 
we will study in a in a way different forms to to say that something is not happening or or something is not done um always comparing things people and animals let's continue uh, always the goal is like identify training needs in my department but also we just focus today in grammar Okay, today we we'll start with a listening exercise, and um, as I say in my personal, uh, my personal opinion, listening is very necessary because we can also, when learning, we can also get the accent, and also we can listen to the pronunciation of the words and we we'll try to simulate the practice and also focus on the pronunciation, the accent, the vocabulary. In that case, we're going to be working in the following listening. Uh, we have uh, different points like the marvelous prices for the game show are, and you can appreciate here three possible answers. Look at this. And uh, number two is like, it is said that a cat has. And we have three choices like 42. We have this uh, each year. So look at that one uh, according to what you listen. A shark is unique uh, because it, and there are three possible choices that I want you to watch right now. And then the next, that is the number four, is like what creature has the largest eyes in the world? And you will listen this and you will try to identify the best answer for this. And the last one is the national anthem. National anthem of Greece has. And uh, you can check this and corroborate according to the conversation or the show, which ones are the correct answers for this one. Are you ready? Yes, let us start. Awesome. That's what I want to hear. Great job. Well, I can see here that there are some students joining. Um, in this moment, I'm going to take a short time to share the the listening part and you can concentrate and also work at that. Let's see here, one second. Meanwhile, I look for it, the audio. We always select this kind of listening because you can also um, work at the speed, the pronunciation, the accent, and uh, we can learn from that. Well, I'm sending you right now the 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 audio so you listen and focus about the conversation and the possible answers related to it. So let's go now. I give you, um, let's see, four minutes to Listen and respond or select the best answer. Let's go then.
Okay, two, uh, two more minutes, and then we're going to share um, the answers. The two more minutes to to analyze, to, and then we're going to share what we have according to the each question or each statement. Okay, let's see the first one. And uh, according to this um, conversation, well, this incredible or interesting prices to, uh, for the game shows are it. What, what was like the, what are the things that were mentioned in this conversation? Uh, which one could you identify from the first one? 30,000. Cash and trip to China. Yes. Thirty thousand dollars. Okay, so we also can uh, summarize that the first answer is this, right? Okay, the money. So we're talking about money, also opportunities for traveling. So it's a good price, and yeah, definitely that for for this show. Well, it, it is also mentioned that um, a, well during the process, uh, that a cat has uh, what. 32 muscles. Ah, okay, okay. Exactly. So that is uh, something interesting. Do you know that? To be honest, no. Okay, neither do I. <laughs> All right, look at the next one. And, um, you know, Shorik is unique because it can't what? Blink ball with, with both, both eyes. eyes. Okay, so it's very, very easy. I know that. All right, that's okay. Well, the next one is like, um, what creatures has the the greatest, the largest eyes in the world? A uh -huh. giant squid. Giant squid. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. And the last one is like, um, you know, the the national anthem of Greece has. What was that? One hundred fifty-eight. Okay. Yeah. Versus. Okay, cool. Yeah, congratulations. It was a very accessible listening part. So it was easy or difficult to understand it? This audio teacher was a little, little mm -hmm. easy, really. In comparison, in, okay, okay. In another class would be so big. Uh, more complicated uh, audios. Yeah, depending depending on the topics, uh, depending on the topics, that's the um, you know the, the the reference, right? Okay, but well, the most important thing is that we can are we well first that we are exposed to English, to ex exposed to native English speakers, and then with the rest is the practice. I, I always I have. As my personal experience that we had to be in contact with the language and all the time it try to you know work with listening skills try to work with the vocabulary expressions everything is necessary in this process okay let's see the next exercise if you allow me one moment i'm going to share with you the next link because we have an interesting exercise to develop and um, I have a question. Do you watch TV or television or do you listen to native speakers? For example, out of class, for example, listening to music in English or watching videos in English, do you do that? Yes. Always an English teacher. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. Movies in English, right? That is uh, something very interesting. Okay, let me share the next exercise we have. We always try to combine, you know, skills. And we have the next activity. It says, 
read the following article and select the answers. We have uh, two, some possible statements. We have the first one. Uh, the text introduction presents, and uh, what possible answer we can find from this. Um, what is the primary cause of you know air pollution? That is the one of the, you will read the article and you will uh, know the answers, right? After reading the article, which is logical effect of over reusing the national water supply? What is the logical effect of this? All of the all of the following effects of environmental problems exact, and you will see some possible answers here. In the last one, which is the best title for it, for the article? So I'm going to share with you right now in a brief way the by the chat. Allow me one moment. One moment, please. Okay, it's right here. Okay, look at this chat, and I'm, I'm sending you the, the article, so you can also check the article, and you're going to read the article and answer these questions that I'm sharing right now, okay? So the question is, can you see the link that I'm sharing you? Oh, can you see the link? Yes. Thank you so much. All right. So I'll give you a couple of minutes because we're working with time. And this is uh, another important point to discuss, uh, focusing on the time. So I'll give you uh, specifically um, four minutes to read and respond to these questions. Okay. So let's, let's go. Let's work and practice.
Okay, uh, two more minutes, and then we check um, the answers about this article. Okay, so let's um, check what information we have um, according to the level of comprehensions and also practiced. And um, it was a very interesting article, and especially because it talks about a very important and remarkable topic that nowadays it's a topic of concerning for the many citizens and people around the world. The first one is the text introduction presents uh, what was the the best uh, conclusions according to this article? What? Yes. The number one? Two opinions about environmental problems. Okay, and it was uh, clear um, the two opinions were, were the opinions clear? Were the two opinions understandable? Mm, yes or not? The introduction uh, test presented the, the mother world situation about the environment. Thank you so much, Emerson. That, that's okay, that's that's good. So which terms means the same thing as global warming? So we see this word, but also there are some other um, words are that we call synonyms to say the same word. Which one do we have, uh, the number two? Give an effect. Uh, the, the, the global warming? Climate, climate, climate change. Climate change is a synonym of global warming. Both have the same meaning. Great job. The third one is what is the primary cost of air pollution? Excessive carbon dioxide emission. Okay. It, uh, the, yes, a lot of carbon dioxide emissions. And you can see that, for example, in the vehicles, in cars, um, when you're born, the fossil fuels, and um, that affect, you know, the environment and also pollute the air. And the next one is, uh, what is the primary cost of, well, actually, we're talking about air pollution, right? Uh, which is a logical effect of uh, ever, ever using the natural water supply. 
drugs teacher. I don't, I don't know uh, how can I pronounce uh, droughts. this word. Droughts. Drugs. It's like uh, drugs. <laughs> ah, the, the, the pronunciation. <laughs> sound. Sound like drugs. Yes. The pronunciation. Okay, it's a drought. Drug. Yeah, so it's um, yeah, the, a logical effect, right? Um, obviously, because there is not water, so there are some places I was reading that there are some places that the water, you know, is vanished. They have no water. Uh, rivers disappear. So imagine how hard is this? So the planet is like changing every time. And also people can see the effects in the environment. Next, um, although the following are effects of environmental problems, except according to the article. It's by travel teacher. Because yes. pollution and the mother extinction and on the own in habitable planet is also for the for the for the environment that danger in the environment yes especially the ecosystems that's right so affecting the ecosystems the or habitat and animals habitat either so it's affecting everything not just humans so everything that has life in this planet so sad so sad for that all right, let's continue with the next one. Which is the best title for the article? In my opinion, teacher, global warming. <laughs> um, I think it's um one part because it, it doesn't mention only the global <laughs> warming. It also mentions some other points of concern. So what do you think? Um, oh, maybe worldwide contamination. Worldwide contamination, mm, but also talk about the lack of water. Or maybe ecology awareness, for instance. It's top environmental concerns. Yes, I mean, we understand that um, we're talking about issues related to pollution, but the the title, because we cannot talk about only water issues or air pollution or oil global warming. So if this is a top, this is everything. So the title should summarize all the points in the article. So the best choice in that case will be like top environmental concern because people are worried about what is going on in the environment. So that's why the answer could be this part, the top uh, environmental concerns. Thank you so much for that. Well, uh, let's move on to the next slide, but I just want to make sure that you understand or you have no doubts related to the article. It's, is, is that clear? Is everything clear? Yes? Yes. Yes, teacher. Okay, it's clear. Yes, okay, perfect. Perfect, guys. Remember, you had a freedom to participate actively and ask questions if you don't understand anything about a topic like, or any words, vocabulary teacher, you know, can you help me with that? Because I think that I don't understand some points or well, perhaps I would like to understand a little bit more of the exercise. So you, you had a freedom to do that. Okay, look at this. The next one. Let's move. Okay, we go with the next topic, but before starting this topic, I need to check the attendance list. So just allow me a couple of you know seconds to check your list and your name, just say present. So please give me a moment.
Okay, let's see who we um let's see the first one, uh Carlos Alberto Dominguez. Present. Thanks. Um Carlos Ernesto Hernandez. Carlos Ernesto. Eh, Edwin Antonio Quinteros. Edwin Antonio. Present teacher. Okay, right there. Um, Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present. Eh, Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Present teacher. Thanks. Um, Jose Bernardo López. Present. Uh, Jose Carlos Argueta. Present. Eh, Jose Salvador Bernal. Mm -hmm. Present. Thank you. Uh, Joshman Atilio Serrano. Present. Joshman, okay. Uh, Juan Carlos Herrera. Present teacher. Eh, Kevin Alfredo Lucero. Present. Uh, Nelson Alberto Peraza. Present. Uh, Osman Enrique Hernández. Osman. Present. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Rafael Alexander Serna. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Ricardo Ernesto Perez. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Cifrido Ernesto Gomez. Present. Thank you. Uh, Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Mirna Elizabeth Alvarenga. Present. And uh, Manuel Antonio Escamilla. Manuel is not here. Nice Camille. Okay. And uh, I repeat the next name Carlos Ernesto Hernandez. It's not here. Okay. Checking that part. All right, let's continue. Um, let's continue about that. So I have a question. Well, we, we are like talking about the pollutions in order some situations. And um, how can we like try to avoid, you know, the pollution? So because it's very complicated. So we're thinking about how can we protect our planet? And I just want to know your um, serious participation. How can we protect our planet? What, what, what should we do to to change this one? What idea can you give me about that? And no opinions about how can we protect our planet? Any comment? We have 19 students, so I think one should talk or say something about um, how can we protect, you know, this our planet? What should we do? Uh, I think, first of all, avoid, try to avoid using the vehicle or motorcycle uh, if you don't need to, because if you need to buy or go to somewhere and it's uh, near, you can walk or use a bicycle, uh, try to not drop uh, garbage on the streets, save the water, uh, save energy, electricity. I think. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, that, that is a good idea. Um, yeah, so I think that we had to, you know, try to, you know, do something in the way that can not protect the planet because it will be kind of hard, but at least where we are, we can also make the difference. That's something that we can also talk about it. Okay, now let's share the following topic. That is a topic that is for me a priority. One second. Okay, uh, what's the name of the topic? 
Yes, what's the name of the topic? Can you see it? Conjunctions. Mm -hmm. You spare conjunction. Conjunctions. <laughs> yes, we're talking about conjunctions. Uh, conjunction. Yeah. So it's called pair conjunctions. And uh, we were studying uh, some pair conjunctions in the previous um, week. And now we start with the second one. Okay, look at this. Okay, who wants to help me to read this chart? I need a volunteer to read this part. Uh, this one and only this. Okay, this part. Who wants to help me to read this? Me, DJ. Thank you. Okay. Nearer nor holds a uh, negative meaning. It, sig it signals. Signals. Not, signals not one of the two options. Example. Neither the employees nor the manager knew about the new training schedules. The verb Special. which the verb which follows two subjects joined by nor must agree with the second subject. Sometimes you will hear to use in the plural form told is it is not grammatically correct. Thank you so much. Yes, um, we we will um, identify the main uh, idea about this one. Neither ignore holds a negative meaning. That is the first point. When we talk about neither ignore, we are comparing two things, and the two things are negative. That is the first point. It signals no, no one of the two options is correct, or no one of the two options is good. So that is the meaning about in that case, neither and nor. So both are negative. So don't forget about that. Okay, now let's check the examples. And I want someone that can help me to read this exercise. Who wants to do it? Yes. Uh, volunteer? Uh, me teacher. Oh, thank you. Uh, grammatically incorrect examples. Neither Fred nor Jack like to attend the coaching sessions. The correct is neither Fred or, nor Jack likes to attend the coaching sessions. Example two. The incorrect form. Neither knowledge gaps nor training needs are addressed without a proper action plan. The correct, uh, the manager neither informs personnel of his meeting in other branches nor his team inquire about his daily agenda. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So you can check here that we are talking about uh, the verb which follows two subjects joined or nor must agree with the second subject. The first subject and the second subject should agree in the negative form. So you can check grammatically uh, incorrect, like neither uh, Fred nor Jack uh, to attend is not possible. So you have to say neither Fred nor Jack likes to attend the coaching section. So that's mean that neither ignore. Do you know what could be, um, what would be the meaning about neither ignore it? Do you know what is the meaning in Spanish about the neither and nor? Maybe ni, y ni tampoco. Look at the look at the chat. 
So that is the meaning about neither and nor. So look at the chat. So I'm sharing in Spanish. What could be the meaning, especially when um, we're talking about in the negative forms. So most agree in the negative form. This the person doesn't do it and the other person doesn't do it either. So, you know, not this and not that one. So you can see the meaning. And also the other examples like uh, neither knowledge gaps nor training needs are addressed without a proper action plan. So you can check the examples uh, that can be very useful, especially in these kind of exercises. The manager neither informs personnel of his meetings in other branches, nor his team inquire about his uh, daily agenda. So the two ideas in are the, in a negative form. So that's why we call the Perry conjunctions. So for that reason, we're going to share uh, the following exercise, some other examples that can help us to know how it is used. One second, I need to remove this. Okay, look at these examples. Uh, who wants to help me to read them? Me too, Chef. Uh, thank you. Examples. Neither the actor nor the singer was at the at the party. Neither Tom nor Lisa answered the phone. Neither the father nor the mother is home right now. Neither she nor he objective, objected to the change in schedule. Neither my friend nor I had uh, had much time for for fun since school starts. Neither the meat nor the fish are very good. Neither they nor we have enough money to go on vacation this year. Neither students nor teachers will be able to use the classroom when they are finished pain, painting painting it. Neither Tom nor his wife were home when I called him. Okay, you can check the following examples here and um, you can um, see the positions about um, neither and also nor in the sentence. Uh, taking into account the two subjects uh, being used in a negative form to say something that is not happening. Like uh, neither Tom nor Lisa answered the phone. Who didn't answer the phone? That was the two guys, Tom and Lisa. Or for example, neither the meat nor the fish are very good. So the fish and the meat are not good. That's why the meaning in that case is negative. Neither students nor teachers will be able to use the class, that classroom when they are finished painted. So you can see that no, this, no students, no the teachers will be able to use the classroom. In that case, using these per conjunctions, neither ignore to say something in a negative form. And how do you see this topic? Do you think it's accessible? Or do you have some doubts related to this topic? Uh, teacher, I just want to do a question for to be sure. And um, for example, in the sentence when when say neither the meat nor to nor the fish. Uh, if we want to put other verb, the that verb. Uh, it's going to be in in third person. In that case, uh, look at this one. Neither the meat and nor the fish are very good. I mean, we're talking about plural. The fish and the meat are plural. So that's why we used are in that case. Um, so, well, in that case, we had to respect the verbs. If we're talking about singular, if we're talking about plural, so we have to respect the verbs. 
And, but the most important is to combine the sentence using neither and nor in that case. Oh, and in the last present, the last presentation said we we need to take the second subject. And or we have to use the the bear. For example, swims swim of swims. Um, let's see. Let's go back. This one. Yes. And said the bird which follows two subjects joining by nor must agree with the second subject. Exactly. So that means that the first subject and the second subject have to be negative or agree in a negative form. Neither okay. Fred nor Jack likes to attend the coaching. Likes, because in that case, that we're talking in a singular form that okay. they don't do anything especially. Right. Okay. Thank. Thank you. I got. I got it. Okay. Cool. So let's see some exercises that I want to share with you, so we can also practice. Look at this. We're going to take a short time to uh, combine the following sentences using neither and nor. Look at this one. We have two sentences, two different subjects. What we had to do is to make one sentence using neither and nor. So that's mean that we're going to form uh, one sentence combined neither and nor. That's what we had to do. Look at the, ex the examples. I want to read them. Frank has not enrolled the, for the training next week. Current has not enrolled for the training next week. Number two, he didn't provide a list of trainings or he didn't provide any other alternative. The employees are not interested in free training. They are not interested in online alternatives. Lack of professional uh, development programs can't help the company grow. A lack of incentives for learning can't help the company grow. Steve Jobs didn't finish college. Bill Gates uh, didn't finish college. Education authorities don't invest enough in education programs for adults. Politicians don't invest enough in education programs for adults. So you can see the ideas are very similar, but are separated. So we need to make one sentence combining the two subjects, agree in a negative form. That's what we had to do. So I'm gonna give you a short time to uh, check and also rewrite the sentences using neither and nor. And I will be here, so I'll give you a couple of minutes. We're gonna give you four minutes to respond. And then we're going to share together these exercises. Let's go then.
Um, guys, I love me one moment, please. I need to add the check the charger here. Just give me one second. Okay. Okay, teacher. Thank you.
um let me see your uh experience right now um are you ready or you are still um, writing the sentences ready to check. so you're ready okay um okay who else is ready Um, someone else is ready? Yes, teacher. Okay, so do we check the answers then? Okay, let's check the answers. Okay, uh, we're going to be using the chat here. Um, what I want you to do is to uh, write in the chat the answers i want you to to check the first one how the first sentence would be check this how the first sentence would be look at this i think i think teacher in the number one neither frank has not enrolled for the training this week nor Kari has not enrolled for the training next, next week. Mm, I don't know. It has to, we had to use a neither and nor in make one sentence. So because we have two sentences, Frank and Karen. So we have to make one sentence, including both subjects and using neither and nor. So... Yeah, uh, is uh, neither Fran nor Karen has not enrolled for the training next week? Um, because we use nor, so in that case, you don't need not. Like, look at the first one. Oh, okay. Okay. Because it's double negative. Oh, okay. okay. Look, at this. look at this. Okay, so how this sentence will be? Who wants to help me? Okay. Neither Frank nor Karen has enrolled for the training next week. That's correct. So we can also check the first sentence. Look at the chat. So it will be in the screen. Uh, neither, as you can appreciate here. Um, so yes, neither Frank nor Karen has enrolled for the training next week. So we have uh, all made one sentence and also in including um, neither ignore because both have the same meaning in negative. Okay, look at the number two. Let's check this number two. Okay. I want to try teacher. Okay. Um, um, let me see. He neither provide a list of trainings nor any other alternative. Um, can you, well, let's check, let's check here. Can you repeat it? He did neither provide a list of trainings nor any other alternative. Okay, so that, that would be a good possibility. That's right. So we also can include, right? Because it's like the same person, uh, he and he. So we can also check, look at this one. 
Let's see. Okay, can you check the, look at this one. I'm gonna write it here, let me see, like this. Okay, look at the example. So neither he provided a list of training nor provided any other alternative. It's because it's the same subject. So because we have he and he. And so in that case, uh, we are not talking about two people. We're talking about one with two situations. Okay, can you see the example? Yes, teacher. Yes, okay. yes. teacher, I, I have a question. Yes. Could I... put the subject at the beginning before neither. Exactly. Yes, you also can use that too. Okay. So remember that the, the most important thing is that we uh we use the neither and nor to explain two negative things, right? Because both should agree in negative. So that's why it's a valid. Okay, look at the third one. Let's let's see the, um, the third one. Let's see how can we make it. Um, it says employees are not interested in, in free training. And then uh, they are not interested in online alternatives. So if you can write type in the chat the sentence, we can uh, see if you have a similar or different answer. So the number three, I want you to chat here. And we're gonna be checking. Yes, this is good. This is not because all of all of us we can practice. Because if you mention only one student, uh, we know the one students did it. So everybody, please try to write it, and we're gonna be comparing the answers. So everybody, please use this chat to write the sentence number three. I give you this time. Sorry, teacher, we have to send in, in this chat, in the meeting chat. Yes, yes, oh, to, okay. to compare your answers because I need to make sure that all of you have done it. Yes. Okay.
Uh, I was checking here. Nice, Jose. Let's see, Jose Bernardo, right? The employees neither are uh, interested in free training nor interested in online activities. Well, that makes sense to me. The next one, uh, neither the employees are not interested in free training nor are uh, nor are interested. So in that case, uh, Emerson, you don't need to use not because nor is the negative. So it's double negative. So in that case, just like neither neither the employees are um, are interested in free training nor interested in online alternative. In that case, we can use and we don't use not. Thank you so much. We are very, very close with that. Uh, the employees neither are interested in free training nor online alternatives. Okay. Uh, okay, that's okay. Who wrote that? It's afraid, okay. And uh, nor online alternatives. Okay, uh, neither look at the, the written form and E. And E, T. Okay, so neither the employees are interested in free training nor in light this. Okay, that's that's also Jose Salvador, right? So you can check that you are combining two sentences using neither and nor, and that is uh, fascinated. Okay, now let's move to the number four, please. Help me to, uh, to chat, use the chat to type the exercise number four. I'm gonna read it, so you can also help me with that. A lack of professional development programs can help the company grow. A lack of incentives for learning can help the company grow. So we're talking about the company in both. So we need to combine the lack of professional uh, development programs and also the lack of incentives for learning. So try to combine the two sentences to make one in a negative form using neither and nor. Okay, if you are ready, we, I will be checking here the the sentence. Okay, we have some sentences. Look at the first one. And okay, neither lack of uh, and operation development programs nor a lack of incentives for learning can help the company to grow. Wow, that was, that was a good, uh, Cifredo. Nice, nice. Uh, neither a lack of professional um, development programs nor 
they will be, it will say nor nor a lack of incentives for learning can't help the company grow. So we made that one sentence. That's okay. We say, let's look at this. Juan Carlos and Nelson, uh, neither a lack of rationals, the company grow, nor a lack of incentives for learning. So we need to check this. Uh, neither a lack of professional development programs, nor a lack of incentive for learning can't, uh, can Exactly, that's okay, uh, can help the company because we're using nor. In those sentences, you don't need to use not because if you use not, ignore or neither, we are using negative, negative, negative. So in that case, neither and nor are negative by themselves. Okay, that's okay. And uh, Jose Carlos, neither lack of professional development, lack of listening. Yeah, this is okay. Also, uh, neither a lack of professional development can uh in this in this case Emerson is not can't it's only can because we're using neither in a negative form and also okay it's okay Salvador and then we have a correct sentences congratulations because you you know how to combine the two sentences in one using neither and nor let's see the number five this is easy this is a piece of cake. It says Steve Jobs didn't finish college and Bill Gates didn't finish college. So this is a piece of cake. So uh, try to chat this exercise number five here. We have Cifrido and Juan Carlos Herrera. Let's see Cifrido. It says neither Steve Jobs nor Bill Gates finished college. Mm -hmm. Look at this, uh, finishes, finishes college. Let's see. Finished, right? So neither Steve Jobs nor Bill Gates finished. Finished in negative, in, in the past, like this one. Finished. Okay, in, look at this. Finished, great job. Yes, it's finished in negative. So neither Steve Jobs nor Bill Gates finished. And uh, neither Steve Jobs nor Bill Gates didn't finish. It, not didn't because we're using uh, neither, remember. You don't have to use didn't, you don't have to use don't, you don't have to use not because we are using neither and we're using not. Uh, neither Steve Jobs nor Bill Gates uh, did finished. Uh, finished college, finished. Let's see, neither Steve Jobs nor Bill Gates finished college. Nice, Mirna. A nice sentence. That is correct. Um, also, uh, Jose Salvador. Okay, Cifredo too. Uh, the finished college. So in that case, Jose Bernardo, you are using finished and finished. Only one finished. So, uh, so you have to use only one. Only one finished. Okay, so that's okay. Congratulations for the ones who have written the sentences. So, okay, nice one, Carlos. That's okay, right. Let's move to the number six. And also thank you for those who have been practicing here. And I see the same students writing, using the chat, the same students. Number six, education authorities don't invest enough in education programs for adults. Politicians don't invest enough in education programs for adults. So look at this. So we're talking about education authorities and don't invest enough in education programs for adults. And politicians don't invest enough in education programs for adults. The number six is very easy, 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 because you can check the same structures. Uh, Cifrido, I was checking a good sentence. Neither education authorities nor politicians invest enough in education programs for adults.
Okay, let's see the rest. Neither, uh, neither education authorities nor politicians in, um, let's see, invest, only invest. Invest enough. So invest enough in education programs for adults. So that would be the best way. Let's see someone else. Mirna in education authorities in our positions to invest. Um let's see. Only invest. You don't need to use do. Yes, teacher. Yes, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I don't need to do. Yeah. I I, okay. I have a mistake. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. That's okay. That it's practice. Don't worry. So yeah, so in that case is good. Uh, neither education authorities nor politicians invest in education programs for adults. Is okay, Jose. In Salvador, uh, neither education authorities no. invest enough. Yeah, it's okay, uh, Salvador, too. And then you can see that we understand the sentences in the best way, right? Congratulations for this one. Uh, have you seen this topic before, or is the first time for you guys to see this topic? Honestly, teacher, me, I hear you, but I don't remember exactly that the rule. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's it's like a new for me. <laughs> okay, it's a new. <laughs> yeah, and also you can see, uh, for example, instead of saying, "Oh, uh, they don't do this one," and they don't do this one, because we used uh, two similar sentences separated using negative, and the advantage about using the per conjunction is that we need to use neither and nor to combine two ideas that we agree in the negative form. So we spend a valuable time using this one. This structure is a very native English structure. So if you know this topic, your English sounds very, very technical, native, and also professional because you say, you know what? Neither Frank nor Karen has enrolled in the training next week. And you are like, well, what do you say? Yeah, because you are using a technical English and uh, that is an advantage because we used native and we use grammar in that case. So that's why it's, a, it's an advantage to, you know, to use it. So my recommendation is that now that you have seen this topic, try to practice with this structure many times in order to be familiar and don't forget these topics. Let's see. Let's move to the next one, next exercise. And uh, also this one, this is easy. This kind of, this is also a very easy topic. And because we're talking about the same person, we're talking about the same person. And I will give you one example about this one. And I will use the chat. One moment, please. It says that you cannot speak English and he cannot write in English. So one example for this instructor, because we're using can is like, and we also can say he can't um, neither, he can um, neither speak nor write in English, like this example. He can neither um, speak nor write in English because the sentence is that he cannot speak English and he cannot write in English. So the best way would be he can neither speak nor write in English. So we use the same person uh, with the two different sentences. Uh, he cannot speak and he cannot write. So because it's the same person, so you can say he can neither speak nor write in English. Made example. So with this idea, because you're you're using the same person, like he didn't not, he did not eat a cake himself, and he did not let others eat it. You should not meet him, and you should not talk to him. So it will be the same ideas, right? You use the same person, uh, respecting uh, the verbs or the auxiliaries like should, has, can't is a 10, right? So I will give you this time to do it, to work in this activity. 
and we will take advantage to check the attendance list. Just give me one second, please. Okay, let's check the attendance list. Uh, Carlos Alberto Dominguez. Present. Thank you. Uh, Carlos Ernesto Hernandez. Carlos um, Ernesto Hernandez. He's not. Uh, Edwin Antonio Quinteros. Present. Emerson Ulysses Monroy. Emerson. Present. Uh, Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Jose Bernardo Lopez. Present. Uh, Jose Carlos Argueta. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Jose Salvador Bernal. Present. Eh, Jos, eh, Josman Atilio Serrano Present eh, Juan Carlos Herrera Present teacher eh, Kevin Alfredo Lucero Present Thanks Nelson Alberto Peraza Pres Present Thank you eh, Osman Enrique Hernández Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Alexander Serna. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, Ricardo Ernesto Pérez. Present teacher. Thanks. Eh, Sifrido Ernesto Gómez. Present. Eh, Wendy Maricela Ramírez. Present. Eh, Mirna Elizabeth Alvarenga. Present. Eh, eh, Manuel Antonio Escamilla Man Manuel is not here okay. okay we have one the first one eh, let's see let's see okay Well, so, you know, let's see. Okay, look at the second one, uh, uh, Jose Carlos. You can check the sentence. So I was like reading the sentence itself, no distractors, but the meaning that he doesn't eat the cake, but he doesn't let the other people to eat it. So a bad person. 
so you can share the cake. Yeah, so he neither. Um, you can see the examples. The other possibility and that we can also use for this sentence for the number two is like he neither, right? He neither he ate. In this case, the Jose Carlos, uh, because the sentence is in is in past, so you have to use the verb eat in past, and the past form is ate. Okay, sorry. Yes, that's okay because the the goal is that we can identify the verbs in the past form. Uh, uh, we can say he neither uh, ate the cake himself, nor let others ate it. Um, let's see. Let or yeah. Okay, that's okay. No, let's others. And let's see, there's one that we battle to see. One second. So we cannot see um, the next one. Uh, he neither ate the cake himself nor let the others eat it. In that case, we can use others because we're talking about plural. Others. Mm -hmm. So I think that we, Mirna, we cannot see the sentence because it's in a small. Okay. Me, teacher, no, it's up. Yeah, it's because it's like a picture. I don't know, but I cannot see it. No, it's in up. Uh, he neither ate the cake himself nor let others ate it. Uh, okay. You can see. You can see is up uh, is then Jose Carlos and me. No, you can see. <laughs> it's because it looks oh, no. very small. Yeah, it looks very small, uh, uh, like color red. Uh, that's what I can see in it. Mm, it's like a. It's I like a file. What happened? Yeah. Okay, look okay. at the next one. Number three, you should not meet him or you should not talk to him. You need a net. Um, he neither. Um, okay. Uh, the others. Okay, what would be the number three? Number three. Look at this. Look at this. The number three. You need to meet. Need to talk to him. Okay, what about the number the number three? Nobody has written. Okay, Sifridos, uh, let's see. Um, you should, and you say you should neither. You should neither. So change it. You should need it. Um, met him. Okay, North. Talk to him. Excellent. That is the that is the, the best. Yeah, that's right. You should yeah. you should neither admit. Uh, you should neither admit him. Um, nor talk to him. That's good. But I'm confused, teacher. In that case, the should is the auxiliary, and the auxiliary is the first and neither. Uh, 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 nor no. <laughs> well, I'm confused because you use should. Yeah, it's an, it's an auxiliary. Yeah, but the auxiliary is first, then neither, then use neither. Yes, in that case, uh, it was uh, before, before it, um, neither. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. 
So we could say you should neither meet him nor talk to him. That would be the best way. Okay, let's see the number four. Look at the number four. It says she has not eaten anything in two days and she hasn't slept either. So you can say she has neither. As an example, she has neither. And then you complete the rest. She has neither. Uh, because in this sentence is a present perfect. Has not eaten and hasn't slept. So it's in the present perfect form. So you can say uh, she has neither and then you write the compliment. Look at But either in this in these sentences is affirmative or positive, yeah. <laughs>
Okay, look at this one. And let's see the number five. The old man cannot walk. She cannot talk. How this would be? Think about this sentence. The old man. The old woman in that case. So we're talking about the same person in that case. We're talking about the same person because in that case, uh, she can walk and also focusing about uh, and talk. So you got this one are like we are sentences uh, because she can walk and talk so bad. They are not so creative. The old woman can neither walk nor talk. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Excellent, uh, Sifrido. That's a good sentence. The old woman can neither walk nor talk. The, and also, okay, also Mirna, they have the same sentence too. Congratulations. Because you have this idea. Okay, let's see the number uh, six. Number six. Yes, the six says that she's not beautiful and she's not intelligent. Wow, look at those sentences. <laughs> are not so like creative. But anyway, those are like examples. We don't know who, but anyway. So we say the this uh, beautiful and intelligent. So how this will be. She's neither um she's neither beautiful nor intelligent. Okay, that's perfect. Nice, Fredo. You you understand pretty good this topic. So she's neither beautiful nor intelligent. So we have this idea in the sentence. Okay, I don't see the others. I don't see the other students. Only only a few students are writing sentences. I don't know if, if it's clear or not the topic or what. I don't know what happened. Number seven, she does, uh, she, uh, he does not attend the class regularly and he does not learn his lessons either. So look at the sentence and try to get the most important ideas. Yes, thank you, Mirna. That's okay. She's neither beautiful nor intelligent. That is uh, very, very clear. Thank you so much. So Mirna gave us the answers and let's see the number seven. Look at the number seven. You say neither ignored. Uh, he does not attend the class regularly and he does not learn his lessons either. So how this would be? Okay, the number seven is very easy because you focus about attending the class and learn his lessons. He neither attend the class. Uh, he neither attends the class. Uh, attends with S. Uh, with S. Uh, uh, Sifrido, add S to attends. Um, attends the class regularly, nor learns his uh, lesson. So only add S to the verbs and the sentence will be good. And you say he does neither. Mm, we, don't need, we don't need to use dust. So it's, we don't use it. 
not learn his lessons, no learns. So always use the S for the third person. Yes, can you check this? So he neither attends, look at this, he neither attends the class regularly nor learn his lessons. Okay, that's a good way. So you can also check this the sentence. And um, well, tomorrow we'll continue working with more ex examples like this, with the goals that everybody can um, manage this topic pretty easy without any difficulty. So because of the time, we're about to conclude. And I really appreciate the participations that you have had in this class. So thank you so much. And you are dismissed. Bye. Have a good night, night teacher. Night. You too. Night, teacher. Thank you, guys. Good night, teacher. You too. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Good night. Night.